Hello guys and welcome back to Lavender Recap. In today's video, we'll be going through a friendship cop action comedy film from the year 2014 titled 22 Jump Street. 22 Jump Street is a sequel to a blockbuster movie, 21 Jump Street, released in the year 2012. There are some major spoilers ahead in today's video of the movie recap of 22 Jump Street, so beware. The movie begins with an opening of previously on 21 Jump Street, displaying a recap of the last film in which Officers Schmidt and Jenko come together and become friends after they reveal the drug dealers Mr. Walters and Eric Molson to Captain Dixon. A new mission is assigned, going to college. After failing in the pursuit of a group of drug dealers led by Ghost, Deputy Chief Hardy asks Schmidt and Jenko to work for Dixon. The new area of their mission is situated across the street named 22 Jump Street. The duo report to Dixon, who informs them that they will be going to the MC state to investigate the appearance of a new drug called Wi-Fi, which means work hard, yes, play hard, yes. The duo then receives a file on the victim of the drug, Cynthia Watson. She was high in Wi-Fi and ultimately fell out her window, causing her death. Schmidt and Jenko are handed over a picture of Cynthia, where she was exchanging the drug with an unknown suspect. Schmidt and Jenko enter the MC state with their aliases of Brad and Doc McQuaid. They get adjusted to their dorm life. Jenko states that he's the first person in his family who is pretending to go to college. The duo meets Keith and Kenny, the Yang twins, who have a very interesting twin connection. The guys then head to some classes in search of some cues for some dealer's connection. Later, they agree to go to an open mic night for slam poetry, where Schmidt meets a pretty girl from his psych class named Maya. He then goes on to the stage and recites a poem in honor of Cynthia. Schmidt and Jenko visit Mr. Walters in the prison. Walter studies the picture of Cynthia and the suspect. He asks the duo to thoroughly pay attention to the photo to see that the suspect has a tattoo on his arm of a bazooka. The tattoo could be seen indirectly on a reflection. It had boom written in a cloud. Moving on, the duo visits a tattoo parlor and accordingly asks the tattoo artist if he remembers giving that tattoo to someone. The artist cites that he may have given it to a football player with a red mohawk. The description instantly strikes Jenko's memory as he states that it closely resembles a fellow from his history class named Rooster. Schmidt and Jenko are on a mission in the football team as they have their prime suspects in there. Jenko initiates a friendship with one of the players named Zook. The duo is trying hard to view Rooster's arm to find the tattoo. Jenko receives an invitation from Zook to a party at his frat house later that night. However, Jenko asks Schmidt to stay behind. Later, Schmidt runs into Maya and hangs out with her at the art building. Meanwhile, Jenko parties with Zuck and the other frat boys. Schmidt spends the night with Maya. Jenko bonds closely with Zuck. Jenko goes with Zuck and Rooster on the football field. Jenko is finally successful in having a look at Rooster's arm. When Jenko spends time with Zuck and Rooster, Jenko learns that Rooster doesn't have the tattoo, however, observes it on Zuck's arm. Surprisingly, it was exactly the same bazooka with Boom. Once Schmidt wakes up from his sleep, he meets Mercedes, the rude roommate of Maya. Maya states that Mercedes was Cynthia's roommate. Schmidt and Jenko report to Dixon at the headquarters with no leads. The guys assemble in their dorm and are eating blondies. The Yang twins state that those are laced with Wi-Fi. Later that night, the guys sneak out at night and invade Zook's frat house. They discuss who should be part of their frat. Jenko gets a nod. However, Schmidt doesn't get approval to be part of it. Later, Schmidt and Jenko are part of the drinking games with the boys. Jenko manages to ace it as he passes their requirements. On the other hand, Schmidt fails to impress as he's gawky and not comfortable. Over a while, Jenko starts spending more time with Zook. Sadly, Schmidt is left alone. For the parents' weekend, Schmidt's parents surprise him with their visit. They are unaware of his undercover role. His parents meet Maya. It's now revealed that Maya is the daughter of Dixon. While Schmidt and Maya's families are having dinner together, Dixon learned that Schmidt and Maya had spent the night together. He's furious and throws the food from the table, creating drama. Maya is annoyed with her father due to his controlling nature. Meanwhile, Jenko is in search of an opportunity where he could get Zook to give out all the details about Cynthia and Wi-Fi. Zook appears to be in a dodgy state. After talking to Maya, Mercedes informs Schmidt that Cynthia had received some sort of medication from Dr. Murphy, the psychology professor. With this information, Schmidt and Jenko slowly enter Murphy's office to gather additional information. However, to their bad luck, Murphy enters his office and assumes that the duo is a gay couple and has come for a counseling session. During the conversation with Murphy, the duo realize that Zook is not the dealer in the found photograph and that he was buying from Cynthia. They also include that Cynthia and the other dealers were hiding the Wi-Fi in the library books 
as nobody would go to the library. Later, Schmidt and Jenko visit Dixon again. Dixon is still furious with Schmidt. Schmidt enters the library to get some clues. Jenko heads to the field for a football game. Schmidt sees Ghost along with his goons waiting for someone in the library. Now Schmidt texts Jenko to come by. He constantly sends messages to Jenko until the latter leaves the game and joins him. Schmidt and Jenko make enough noises to attract one of Ghost's goons to come over. In this process, Jenko headbutts the goon. Ghost recognizes Jenko and Schmidt the scoffs. Ghost and the goons begin to shoot and they take out their guns and begin shooting, forcing Schmidt and Jenko to run for their lives. Jenko manages to get a helmet-shaped car. They're constantly chased by Ghost and his goons. The chasing drama continues across the campus, which causes humongous damage to the property. They drive the car onto the football field and the brakes fail. Schmidt and Jenko manage to jump out of the car. The car further crashes followed by an explosion onto the goal post. Further, Schmidt is taken into custody for questioning. Maya is mad at Schmidt for lying to her about his identity. Jenko constantly spends time with Zook along with other companions. Schmidt is in charge of part 2D. Dr. Murphy is under arrest as there are traces of Wi-Fi found in his office. The case is declared closed by Deputy Chief Hardy. If you think this is the end of the movie, then you're mistaken. Schmidt digs in the case further. He meets up with Jenko in the park. Schmidt observes that Ghost has been paying for his student's tuition. Jenko informs Schmidt that a large supply of Wi-Fi is headed towards Puerto Mexico for spring break. They decide to come together as a team and proceed further to end this matter. Schmidt and Jenko land in Puerto Mexico and enter into a party on the beach. What they see is Wi-Fi is being sold everywhere. To their surprise, they find Mercedes collecting all the money. Schmidt and Jenko follow Mercedes to a warehouse. The duo learns that Mercedes is Ghost's daughter and that they're organizing a network to distribute Wi-Fi everywhere in the country. Apparently, gang twins are also found at the beach. Dixon, along with his remaining people, entered as they were following Schmidt's tracking device. Ghost is successful in grabbing Mercedes' bag with the money and runs. Dixon runs after Ghost but watches his daughter Maya partying in the warehouse with others. Schmidt and Jenko split up. Schmidt takes a Lamborghini while Jenko chases after Ghost. With the help of a stone girl as a weapon, Jenko manages to fight off his goons on the beach. Schmidt drives the Lamborghini to a hotel and manages to catch up to Mercedes. Dixon aims his gun at Mercedes but she holds Schmidt at gunpoint. Maya takes Mercedes down and hits her head with a metal fish. Mercedes is arrested. Schmidt joins Jenko in catching Ghost. Schmidt and Jenko find Ghost who is trying to escape in the helicopter. A goon shoots at them and Schmidt tries to take a bullet for Jenko as he did in the prequel movie. However, like the last time, Jenko injures his arm. Jenko kills the goon and is successful in making it to the helicopter. Schmidt reaches there too. Later, Schmidt orders Jenko to reach into the former shorts to grab a grenade. The duo manages to escape from the helicopter. Jenko is successful in throwing the grenade into the helicopter. The helicopter bursts into flame. Alas, the entire supply of Wi-Fi is destroyed. The duo is applauded by the whole crowd at the beach. Schmidt and Jenko understand each other's values and friendship. Dixon congratulates Schmidt and Jenko for fixing their self-created mess. He then tells the duo about their next assignment, which is medical school. This carries into the credits where Dixon is constantly assigning Schmidt and Jenko to new assignments or schools, paving the path for fake Jump Street sequels. And that's the end of today's movie recap. What do you think of this action comedy movie? If you enjoyed today's video on this movie recap, don't forget to like the video before you leave. With that being said, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to receive updates as and when we upload new content regularly. Thanks for watching.